uh, all right, so here's here was the short. Here was the short thesis, right? Starbucks gets fucked during bad times. They get utterly fucked during bad times. We could see this if we go back, right? Let's look over here. This is August of 2019, doing really good. Um, March of 2020, shit gets really scary, right? Um, Starbucks goes from 85 to 46, gets cut in half. One could argue that, okay, that happened, right? And then you see weakness, um, again, with Starbucks over here, um, August 2021, and then just how far it went in June of 2022. Just a massive, so it was up in the 120s, dropped all the way back down to 65, another 50% drop, right? We also have, from a technical standpoint, what is a rising broadening wedge, that sucks, that could mean revert to $50, okay? So that sucks. That sucks if you're Starbucks. Also, if we go back a ways here and look at Starbucks at you know 2006, and then really kind of when, when things started to go shitty at the end of 2007, just to the bottom, it's hard to see here, but that's a 74% drop um, that this thing undertook in a period of about a year. So during the great financial crisis, it dropped 74%. We know they have tons of international exposure. We know the technical setup on this is shit. And we know that it is a rising, broadening wedge that looks like it's trying to print its right shoulder out of left shoulder, head, right shoulder, lower lows, and it looks like it wants to break down to here. And if it breaks down to here, again, mean reversion for this thing is 52. So I think that this is a decent put play. But I will say this. If you look here on the weekly, we're getting closer to the RSI being oversold. So if we get to... 79, 80, something like that. This might want to have one more bounce trying to get up maybe into the 80s before it eventually can roll over. But again, these guys are are in for some potential pain just from China. And again, international markets in general. Uh, but a lot in China because people just aren't buying there anymore. Revenue growth, 8% year over year. Um, nothing crazy there. Estimates going forward kind of show a, a topping out in revenues and show EPS being okay. So no real signs of pain yet. I think a lot of what they've experienced, and again, you can see how they've been doing share buybacks. They've got a lot of debt, but they also have people that um, they've got money to sitting on the sidelines from people that buy all these Starbucks gift cards and don't use them. Maybe they'll start using them now. I don't know. But cash flow and everything looks still pretty good. And yet the stock, I think, just on the narrative of pain in China. And now we're underneath the 200 moving average again for the second time in the last couple of years on the weekly time frame. That sucks. And then if you look under here, it's like tested under these levels now for what is the fourth time um, going back you know, to 2018. And then if you look before that, it was above the 200 weekly moving average since March of 2010. So it rode above this thing all the way until, you know, 2018. So it made it eight plus years. It was above that number. And now we keep testing underneath of it. And so it's, it's a scary sign that this next one, maybe we drop down here, we test back up. And then we just never get back above it and roll over. And with what I'm seeing in international markets, especially China, I still think this is a decent short play. So that was my thesis there.